of uh, people that played the blues when I first came here acted like they were embarrassed to play it. They would say uh, things like, oh, are you a blues man? Well, I play a little bit of everything. I play the blues. I can play any kind of music in the world, but I am a blues man. I'm proud to be a blues man. The average college student, the average young person who probably prefers to listen to hip hop, blues would not be at the top of their list as far as records to buy. So now the club scene is basically for the young kids, you know, rock and roll and of course hip hop. And blues, if you have a blues festival, everyone supports that, but furthermore it's blues clubs, they're a dime a dozen. Most of the juke joints are gone. They were always kind of like outlaw, little outlaw clubs. I mean, these were real southern roadhouses, right? People used to come in like with their cups, right? They'd pull their bottle out, pour their liquor in there, and, and you know, the, the police would come and bust them for not having their licenses, and so a lot of them were out of business. And it'd be one o'clock when I quit. I would go to the after hours clubs and play again. <laughs> and so we'd be playing, I mean, sometimes we'd literally be playing all night, and we'd leave, in the morning, and the sun would be up. <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, there were quite a few places like that, but they all uh, got run out of business, and I don't even know any after-hours clubs anymore. But boy, would I like to see one. And I think all of us that continue to play here, I think still in our hearts, reminisce and feel those old days. And I think when we close our eyes, I think secretly we still wish that it was still those same old days. Unfortunately, it's not. The reality is the blues audience has died down considerably. And people have told me, uh, especially people that don't live here, oh, uh, the blues is dead in Oakland. Hell, I'm not dead. Uh, I, I wrote a song one time after hearing Sonny Rhodes, who's one of my mentors, uh, say that the blues had to be sad. And I said, BS. Okay, so I wrote a song called Good Time Blues and ended up recording it on a 45 uh, because I do, I, I believe that blues is everything. If you live, you're going to have the blues. If you live, you're going to have the blues at some point. It's not down depressing music at all. I mean, some of, some of them, do, they deal with uh, some pretty uh, bleak subject matter some of the times, but, uh, but it's really music to get you out of the blues rather than put you in it, you know? The old blues guys when they came here, they played like they were sad. They played like they were tired. They played, and, and they probably were tired. And I said, well, I'm gonna have a good time. And I got a lot of criticism for having a good time. I mean, can you imagine having criticism for having a good time? But I had a plan to make the blues lively, to make it fun, to, you know. That's why when you see me jumping around and having, I'm actually having fun. I think it keeps you young. If you use the music right, you can get a lot of things out of it. I mean, I'm pretty young. I'm only 59, so. <laughs> I'll be 60. I can't wait to get 60. I want to see what shape I'm in 60. Because most people that are 60, especially bluesmen, they're like, you know. Okay, did you hear that train? Did you hear that train that just went by and all that? Us harmonica players are fond of saying there's, there's train in everything you play on harmonica. I mean, I play the train all night long, and uh, people that have seen me play don't realize I'm playing the train all night long. It's just a constant rhythm. The, see, the music doesn't stop when I stop playing. The music, when you're a musician, the music is always with you. The blues is alive and well. Just don't look for it at Starbucks. You won't find it on MTV. Don't look for it, you know, at Macy's. Don't look for it at the mall. And that's not where you're gonna find the real stuff. So it's gonna have to be in your heart for you to find it. Oh, Berlin, Berlin, oh, look, can you get us, little can sweetie. Yeah. Leave each other's women alone. Yeah, we are. He's generally pretty polite to my women. Even I, though, even I though feel though sorry for him. I can't help but feel, you know, it's like... <laughs> and I'm gentle with the kids and the puppies and the kids. When Paulette comes up here, yeah. like, not only do you give her money, you, you give her your barbecue no, as well. No, she takes my barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bird-legged extravaganza. 
Right. Paul Lynn is a little person. Yeah. I don't mind the money. I really don't. But I detest her taking my barbecue. If you, I go, if you were two feet taller. <laughs> yeah.